to my channel, it's your girl Shakayla K, and I'm back with another video. So today I'm going to be like chopping it up, giving you like a brief rundown of like the climates of my depression and how I initially overcame my depression. I was diagnosed with major depression disorder and I actually went through this for six months of my pregnancy and it literally took me 30 days to overcome depression. The entire six months that I was depressed, I did not try to get over it. Well, I can say I was because I went to therapy I took the antidepressants, but deep down in my mind, I didn't want to. Not saying I didn't want to not be depressed. I didn't take thorough action to get over depression. I'm gonna just tell you this to make you understand what I just said. Change your mind, change your life. I was doing things for myself to get out of depression, but I had the same thought pattern. I still woke up every day and told myself, you stupid. I hate you. You don't even deserve to be here. You're dumb, you're crazy, you're worthless. You're pitiful, pathetic. I still woke up, told myself all those things, and I still cried every single day. Even though I'm going to therapy, pouring out my heart to this woman. Therapy's supposed to make you feel better, but all I was doing was telling her my problems. She gave me things to do, and I didn't do the activities. I took the pills probably once a week, probably once a month, really. I was doing what I needed to do as much as I told myself and told my family that I want to overcome depression I didn't believe it I wasn't doing the things I needed to do I had been depressed before but it was more like sadness like somebody hurt my feelings and I held on to that for a long time but this it was terrible it wasn't like just sadness it was pure anger her hatred towards myself I don't recommend anyone to hold on to depression because stress kills the more stress you are the more likely you want to not be be here the more likely you're gonna think maybe I should just end it all not only are you mentally not well when you're depressed you're making yourself sick I made myself sick just by being so sad every day I didn't want to get out the bed so my body was aching all the time I could barely walk and I had severe headaches I noticed a big change after I overcame depression and this was at the end of my pregnancy I had a whole lot more energy I was not sick in the body anymore I was so depressed to where my thoughts took over my life. So first thing I was thinking in the morning was, I don't want to get out of bed. That's the first negative thing. And I'm going to tell y'all where my depression came from. I determined where my depression came from because once I fixed these problems, then I wasn't depressed anymore. My depression came from unforgiveness of myself. And I was holding on to things from so long ago. Like I'm a person of love. So I love very hard i love to be loved i love to give love i love to help i love to do everything i just love like <laughs> i'm a taurus baby <laughs> taurus nation so you know love is life for us and when i was younger i didn't get the love that i needed so once I was free to get it, I got it from the wrong person and I knew it was the wrong person. Every action has a consequence. I knew I wasn't supposed to be with this person, but I still did it. So now I have two children by this person and I am a single mother, like a true single mother to where he doesn't financially, socially, mentally, physically do nothing for my children. He's not in my children's life, period. As time progressed, I just wanted to be loved. So I made better choices in the men that I dated. To be really, really honest with you, my exes, the first mistake they made, I cut them off completely, completely. <laughs> Like, I didn't forgive or nothing. So this time around me getting into another relationship, I made sure I prayed about it. And I've always been a person that prayed to God to give me someone to love me. I wanted a husband, but I still had unforgiveness in my heart. Unforgiveness causes doubt, insecurity, fears, anger. I had all that stuff bottled up inside of me. My insecurities came out from time to time, but it wasn't a big problem. We were great. Like this relationship was the best until I got pregnant. You wouldn't understand how I felt. I want a very, very big family. I want a 
lot to children. I love children. I was very, very hurt when I got pregnant because that was my doing. That put me in a very, very tight space in my head. You're not married, even though this is this man is very good to you. He's very good to your children. But the insecurities, they attack, baby. That anger, it attacked me. So it was to the point where I was so angry with myself that everybody could see. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to talk to my children. I didn't want to talk to my boyfriend, my coworkers, my family, my friends. I didn't want to talk to nobody. It got so bad to where my friends were dropping like flies. They're like, when you get yourself together, hit me up. And I'm like, wow, these are people that's supposed to be here for me. If you're not there for yourself, how could you expect anybody to be there for you? So I was very, very hurt from my friends doing this to me. And it was more than one friend. So I knew it was terrible. But how could you blame them? As time progressed, like I went to work, nobody wanted to talk to me. People noticed that change. I actually had a manager come up to me and was like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Like... You're just here, you blank. You don't have no expression, you're not jolly. You're usually jolly, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? And I told her that I was going through what I was going through and she encouraged me. But my coworkers even said, you are the person that keeps us together at night. With last, cause I talk so much. I talk a lot, believe it or not. <laughs> it got to a point where I was so badly insecure with my boyfriend to where he avoided me. We lived in the same house and we barely saw each other. He didn't want to be in the same room with me. He didn't want to be the same house with me. He didn't go anywhere, but he didn't want to be around me. And my children were the same way. They didn't want to come in my room to ask me for a thing. As I look back on it, I felt bad at first, but I can't regret that because that's a part of me. That's a part of my story. That's a part of my history. So I had to live with that. I had to live with that hurt. I had to live with that pain. You create your own atmosphere. What you put out in the world is what you get in in your world. So if I'm putting out anger towards everybody around me, then they're not going to want to be around me because they don't want to be angry or they're gonna become angry or feel some type of way. And I blame everything that I was going through on everybody but me. And it was me the entire time. Have you ever heard the saying, tragedy brings blessings? I heard that from Liz Brown. In order for me to get over depression, God <laughs> took my man away from me. <laughs> so when he left me at first, I was like, the hardest person in the world. Like, I was just like, it was terrible. Like, for the first two or three days, I couldn't even go to work. I couldn't do nothing. I was just so hurt. And I felt like God hated me. Like, when he left, I couldn't think. I couldn't think my, my world was crushed. But one day, I realized that I neglected him. I deserved that. That felt like a tragedy to me because as much as I prayed while in this relationship and before this relationship, God told me that that was my husband. So it was like God snatched my blessing away. God will do that sometimes. Maybe about four days later, after he left, I woke up and I was just like, girl, do you know that you are a queen, baby? You do not have to be depressed. God took that man away from you because you were being selfish. So selfish. My anger shifted from myself to working on myself. But I woke up and I was like, baby girl, <laughs> in my beast of my own voice, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You can't be out here sobbing and crying over nothing. Like, sis, I was over here sobbing over a man, crying over a baby, sobbing over spilt milk, baby. I prayed and I told myself, I'm going to work on myself to where whatever tragedy or whatever change I go through in life, I will see God and I will be content with myself. No matter the circumstances now, I stay happy. If there's anything that comes against me now, I'm ready to battle it out, baby. I'm ready to battle it out. What's up? Yeah, I know y'all are ready for me to tell y'all what I did to get over depression. The first thing I did was I started reading the Bible. At first, I was reading like five freaking chapters a night. That's too much. Now, I only read two. Sometimes I read one, but I read it over and over until I understand, until I intake 
the word of God into my life. That wisdom has changed my life so much. I started saying, thank you, God, as soon as I wake up. I wrote down a, a whole list of things that I'm thankful for, and I started reading it. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my job. So I started back trying to connect with God. And the first week of me doing that praying, I felt like it wasn't working, but I still did it. But I would pray, give God gratitude, and read the Bible the first week. So the second week comes around, I started listening to motivational speakers, and I ordered self-help books the book that helped me so much it helped me get up off my feet was the power of positive thinking by norman vincent peel that's my favorite book literally after the first two chapters of me reading this book i started doing things i ain't never did before <laughs> what les brown said in order to be someone you've never been you have to do things that you have never done so i started helping myself in ways i ain't never helped myself i started saying i am affirmations every day i started back going to church i started back listening to my preachers as i was saying my prayers i was i was telling god like show me my purpose i have to get excited about something because at this point i'm still depressed but it's not like detrimental depression is going away and i slowly 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 wrote down my goals i read my goals every day i read my plans every day and i don't just read them i do something to contribute to my goals and i have a lot of goals it's a whole lot of goals even if it's just getting on my computer and editing my youtube for 30 minutes i do it every day i exercise every day now even if i just bust one squat i did something exercise and helps your brain and let me tell you the main two speakers who i was listening to the 30 day span of me getting over depression les brown and eric thomas they inspired me to do so much learning comes from hearing so i listen every day sometimes the entire day over and over and over and over again you have to change what you put into your body when i was going through depression i wasn't putting nothing into my body i wasn't listening to anything positive the only thing i was listening to was myself tell, telling myself how terrible of a person i was at the end of my 30 days my thought pattern changed i'm motivated i'm ready for every battle i told y'all i'm ready ready for every battle period and let me tell y'all how God challenged me. I told myself that I wasn't depressed no more and God said, let me test this girl. Look, but when I tell you I went through hell and hot water, I was sick, I couldn't go to work, so that means money got short, bills still tall. Damn near everything in my house then broke down. My landlord fixed everything, but I had to pay for it. So I'm short on money, my car broke down. <sighs> I gotta pay for my car. The whole time I'm just like, devil, you don't scare me, period. Bring it, bring it. I didn't get discouraged about it. I was just like, God, if I can't get it fixed this week because Bills was punching me in the throat right and left, then it's just gonna sit here. I call a ride. I got bus fare, baby. I kept a positive attitude. So much happening at once. It was like life was kicking me in the butt. God will never put more on you than you can bear. So I kept a positive attitude about everything then. Next thing you know, blessings start pouring in. Non-stop, 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 non-stop. Blessings, 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 blessings. God was showing out, baby. God was showing out. I started doing stuff that I've been telling myself I'm gonna do for five years. That's how I knew I overcame depression because now it's just like, I have joy in my life. I'm content, I'm happy. I don't care what comes against me. I'm ready. The battle's not mine, it's God. I added so much more value to myself from changing my mind. You can have whoever, whatever, and however you want in your life. Whatever I want, I'm going to get. Because I got that mindset. And if I have to chase it for 10 years, I'm going to chase it. And I'm never going to stop. I'm just going to be persistent with whatever. And that is just pure faith. You have to have that. Faith. All it took was for God to take somebody so precious away from me. Yes, I love him. I still love him. But sometimes God takes people or things out of your life because you didn't deserve it. It's either a lesson or a blessing. But either way, it's God's world. We are just living it. Remember that your mind is the key to success. I promise you, 
change your mind change your life i am so eager to wake up now in the morning i have so much coming to the world in the next few months depression anxiety insecurity does not live here anymore being faithful being bold courageous that's who lives in me confident god rocket it baby because i forgave myself i worked hard to get rid of that depression it may seem like it wasn't hard because of the things i said i did really reading praying but it's very very hard to get out of a negative headspace to put yourself in a space where you know you need to be I added so much more value to my life just by changing my mind. At first, I felt like I was nothing. Now, I feel like I'm everything. I'm a queen. The devil is not over my life anymore, and that does not necessarily mean tragics will not come. Tragic will come. You just have to pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and keep going. Be persistent. Push harder. Everything you want in life, you can get. I don't care who you are. You don't have to have no legs, no arms, baby. You can do whatever you want to do. I promise you, you can. I look back on depression and I just say, girl, you ain't even had nothing to be depressed about. I had everything. I, I had great children, loving children. They love me to death. I had a man that loved me to death. He took care of me like a queen. He took care of my children like his own children. I had a great paying job. And you sitting up here depressed, girl, bye. I had no reason to be depressed, but those events is what made me who I am today. That's a part of me, that's a part of my story. And right now, I have the imagination of a millionaire. If you don't believe me, watch me. Change your mind, change your life. That's all for this video. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell and become part of the notification gang gang. And I will see you guys later, bye.